I've always been a bit intimidated by Eldar models because they're always presented so clean and crisp and I don't really like doing paint jobs like that so I decided to try a little grimdark Eldar. This Wraith Lord I'm going to show you how to do with just acrylic paints, no oil washes or things like that. Even though those tools are really cool, they take a bit of specialisation and to be honest I don't really know how to use them so I'm not going to use them in this video. Uh, we're going to be using a bit of dish sponge, if you've got a spare one of them under the sink grab that and watch the video and hopefully you'll learn something. Let me start off by saying do not hold a drill in one hand and the thing that you want to drill in the other hand. Use a vise or a quick grip or something like that, something to keep your fingers out of the way. Now the safety proofing's out of the way, what I'm doing here is drilling little holes to slot magnets in so I can have different weapon choices on this model. Just drill a little hole to the diameter and the depth of the magnet and super glue it in place, but make sure you check the north and south of the magnet, otherwise it's going to do the exact opposite of stick together. I wanted to change the pose of this model because I thought it was a little bit boring it standing upright. So I wanted to bend one of the knees like stepping up onto a raised bit of rock. So as I was building it I just kind of put the legs where they were originally and just tried to estimate where they would be sitting if it had a bent knee. And I used this uh, white paint pen to roughly mark out the area where the rocks are going to go. And this is going to be where you stick your cork board and where you put the step in. And as you can see here, I'm just building it up as gradually as I go, just to try and make it look a little bit more organic. And I'm using super glue so I can tack it down a bit quicker. And just a couple more WHNS violations here. I'm cutting the knee joint. And I'm going to start cutting in from the front of the knee. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more space so I can move it. And then when I've moved it in position, I'm going to fill the gap that it creates with green stuff. And with a little bit of back and forth trial and error, we get the pose that I'm happy with. And if you're not sure, green stuff is a two-part epoxy putty that you mix together from two colours and it dries hard like plastic. And I tend to favour green stuff because you can sand it and cut it nice and easily once it's dried. And if you're a real talented sculptor, you can make some really interesting parts for your models with this green stuff. I've dabbled with some simple stuff like hair and flames, as you can see on my Instagram if you go and have a look. Um, but some people can make entire models out of this stuff and it's worth getting hold of some just to have a little play with because with a little bit of practice you'll be pretty surprised with what you can achieve. It has quite a long curing time so you've got plenty of opportunities to tweak and fine tune the pose. Once it's nice and hard, I'm going to come back with the rotary tool with a sander bit on the end. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean up. I used the pointed end sander for this one because I have to get around all the little gemstones and in the little crevices. And because the rest of this model is pretty smooth, you want to spend a bit of time blending this in. Now, after several hours, I'm pretty happy with this and I want to start painting it. And to make this a bit easy for myself, I'm going to pin all the parts using unfolded paper clips and corks. Now this is a good practice with larger models because it ensures that every piece gets a nice coat of paint. This takes a bit longer than usual but sometimes it's worth the wait. This is good practice for your delayed gratification. Now I'm going to start spraying this with black because I want the overall theme to be quite dark. Even though I'm going for a cream colour, um, I still want the motif to be quite dark and grimy. Once everything's primed in black, I'm going to come back with Zandri Dust and I'm doing this uh, with Citadel paints. Now these paints aren't really designed to go through the airbrush as they're quite thick so you're going to have to use some thinners if you're going to use this Citadel paint. I'll probably use about one drop of thinner to every two drops of paint and that gives me a consistency that's similar to milk if you can just try and picture that when you're mixing your paints for airbrushes. And once I'm finished with the Zandri Dust, I'm going to come back with Screaming Skull and I'm going to spray this uh, from a top-down angle onto all the pieces. This is because in this model I want the light to be coming from above so the lighter colours are going to be on the raised areas. And that's always a good thing to consider when you're painting models is your light source. 
I've only recently just started to discover objective source lighting, but it's a really fun process and it just brings your models to life in my opinion. And I'll be making some videos on testing some methods for achieving objective source lighting. Now just to make the highlight a hat trick, I'm just going to add a little drop of white and I'm going to do a really light spray over the tops even further than I did before, so pretty much 90 degrees over the model. Now for the helmet I'm going to use this really fun paint which is a Psychotic Illusions from Green Stuff World. Uh, this is a colour shift paint so it's like a, a two tone and it's just a little bit strange you need to mix it really well but it gives a really nice effect it sort of gives me a bit of a Geiger aliens vibe. Uh, it came out a little bit too bright in my opinion so what I'm going to do is just go around the edges with black with the airbrush just to try and tie it in a little bit. And to make it shine, I'm going to give it a coat of this Mission Models Gloss Coat, which is a, a gloss coat designed to go through airbrushes. Once all that's dried, we're going to start doing a little bit of stippling with a bit of dish sponge. Now you can get sponges from anywhere, but I found this one under the sink. You might do the same. If you go look under your sink, you might find a bit of sponge. And we're going to stipple this with Rhinox Hide. And what you do is you just put a little dab on your sponge and then you get a piece of paper towel and get the excess off. And I'll just lightly dab this over the bits of the model where I think there would be chipping and wear. And this is generally around the sharp edges of the model, but a little bit all over as well, but just concentrating on those areas where there would be more wear and tear. And try not to go overboard with this as well, less is more with techniques like this. And as we've airbrushed the base colour in three different colours, it's a bit harder to correct any mistakes that we make. But luckily, seeing as this is going to be a dark and dingy model, uh, we've got a lot more room for error. And there's not much you can't fix with a bit of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. Now I'm going to retrace my steps using the same process, but this time with white. And the intention of this is to highlight all the little chips that you've just made. And this does get quite messy, so feel free to use gloves when you use this. Um, it's generally good practice not to touch your models when your hands are dirty, but sometimes I just can't help myself. Now we've got some nice chipping. We've got, oh, ignore that. Now we've got some chipping. We're gonna wash the model with Agrax Surf Shade and make it look a little bit more grimy. And this is going to tie everything together and also get a bit of contrast between those different parts of the armour. So go ahead and run this around all the recesses of the model and also we're going to come back and do a little bit of streaking on these bits of corrosion and chipping. With the larger darker chips I just get a bit of Agrax and drag my brush downward so it sort of looks like it's been leaking. And you can see it's quite grimy and grungy now and it's almost where we want it to be. Now I'm going to use Vallejo Gunmetal to fill in all the bits of the undersuit of the model. These are all the little flexible parts behind the knees and on pretty much all the joints. Now I'm going to do all the plasma glow and I wanted this to be purple so I'm going to use Nagaroth Knight which is the darkest purple in the Citadel range and block in all the plasma coils. Now the first coat's down I'm going to wash them all with Drukey Violet. And this is a dark purple wash and this is just going to sit in between all the little coils. And while you've got this paint out, thin it out to about 50-50 water and wash and just run it around the edges of all the plasma areas. This is going to give you a little hint of a glow. And this is a nice easy way to give your models a little bit more life. And once you've done that step, we're going to go in with a slightly lighter purple and start picking out all the edges and the individual coils. And don't be afraid to go back and forth with your plasma. There's no harm in going back to your base coat and starting again. Plasma is one of these tricky things to do to make it look realistic and there's no real one way to do it. 
and once you've done that lighter purple I'm going to come straight in with white and just do a nice little single line across the top and it's important to leave the gaps between the coils as dark as possible. Now again with more grimy effects I'm going to use this MIG gunmetal pigment and I'm going to use an old brush for this so I'm just going to keep it dry to pick a little bit of it out of the pot and just drag it over the tops of all the weapons just to give a, a few little impressions of burn marks. And the idea of this grimdark effect is to give the impression that this model has been standing in a battlefield for a long time so you're guessing those weapons have been discharged a number of times so it's good to make them look used. I didn't really have much of a plan with this sword suffice to say I wanted it blue and glowy. But I'm not sure what style of sword would have suited this aesthetic so I decided to just play around with a bit with a few colours. And I started off with a light blue which is Talisar blue contrast mixed with some contrast paint just to start off with a, a light base colour. And I decided to go a little bit rough with it to try and come up with some organic shapes. And once that initial base was done I painted the hilt gold using Retributor armour. The next step was to vary up the blue a little bit so I took out this McCrag blue which is a darker blue and went around the edge of the blade. These different blues were to give the impression that there was light moving around inside the blade. And on the other side of the blade I wanted to light it up a bit with a bit of Calgar blue which is a lighter blue. And the same principle as before just building organic shapes on the back end of the blade because this is where the light is emanating from in this case anyway i mean it's a piece of ancient technology i don't know how it works and this is lotherm blue with a little bit of white mixed in and i am going to be a little bit neat here because i'm going to try and pick out the sharp edges and holding the model and the brush on an angle like this is an easy way just to let the brush do the work. It'll automatically pick up all the sharp edges when you hold it in the right position. And when I say right position, I mean whatever position's right for you. And I'm a little bit cack handed sometimes, but I do what works for me. And that's just because I've experimented with holding the brush differently, holding the models differently. And that's what it's all about really, just exploring what's good for you. And the tried and tested Citadel System Gold, just a quick wash with Agrax Earthshade and an edge highlight with Liberator Gold. Now this is the part that's going to test your patience, painting all of the little gemstones. Now there's a lot of them on this model, but it's a good opportunity to try and push your concentration. It's like a muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it'll get. Or do it in little batches, whichever way works for you. And what I'm starting with is black and then I'm going to start building up all of the blue colours uh, all the way to a little pin prick of white and then I'm going to coat them in a gloss coat so they look nice and shiny. Now the first blue I'm going to use is Cantor blue and what I'm doing here is painting the bottom two thirds of the gemstone with the blue colour. And I'm leaving the top third black and this is going to look like there's light passing through the gemstone like it's semi opaque. And building up the brightness of the blues, I'm going next for Calgar Blue. And a similar principle to this, I'm going to do the bottom third of the gemstone, leaving the other two thirds to be the darker blue and the black. Can you see where I'm going with this? I bet you can't guess what I'm going to do next. That's right, an even lighter blue. So this time it's Lotherm Blue, and I'm just doing a small little dot down the bottom of the gemstones. Now I'm going to take a tiny dab of white and just pop that in the black section at the top of the gem and this is going to give a faux gloss effect. And I'm still going to use the gloss coat but you can leave it here if you don't have any gloss varnish. And it's only recently myself that I've started coating these gemstones in gloss varnish. I do it a lot with my Blood Angels teardrops and I found it works really well. It's like adding in an extra texture in there. And the gloss coat I'm using for these is Ard Coat which is a Citadel technical paint. Well, not strictly a paint, it's a varnish, but still. And I'm going to take this to all of the gemstones. And then after this model, I'm probably not going to paint anything with gemstones for at least a few weeks. And to give the sword a bit of a glow, I decided to use a bit of contrast medium and a bit of temple guard blue. 
and the mixer mic is about 70% contrast medium. And I'm just going to put this wherever I think the light emanating from the sword is going to land. So the back of this little bubble bit and then along the top of the hand and the wrist. And don't forget the thumb as well. As a display of my engineering skills, I'm going to use these two pots of paint to balance the arms while I glue them together. Now I'm happy with the way this model's going, so now it's time to build it a base. Now I'm going to grab my dirt and bit box and start making a little textured base. Start with PVA glue, brush it around a little bit, and then grab any little bits of stones or dust or whatever you got knocking around, just whack it on there. I've got this batch of flock that I've had knocking around for a few years now and I made this flock by mixing cheap acrylic paint with sawdust and I got the sawdust from my local cabinet makers and they might give you a few funny looks when you go in there and ask for a bucket of sawdust but you're going to have enough flock to last you a lifetime unless you're building model railways or giant terrain boards of course once it's all dry I'm going to give it a twin spray once with the Tamiya dark spray paint and then a second little blast with the white and the white's just going to pick out all the little raised edges and give it a nice little highlight. And to tone it down a bit, I'm going to go over it with Black Templar Contrast Paint. This is a black contrast paint. It's basically like a really thick wash. This is just going to level out all the colours to make it nice and even and muted. And to make it look a little bit more interesting and alien and eerie, I'm going to use a little bit of this Pterodon Turquoise. And I'm just going to work it onto the lighter areas so it looks like it's got a little bit of a weird alien glow. And you know, alien glows are different to regular glows. And here we have a Grimdark Eldar. Really missing the Craft World paint shop right about now. If you'd like to learn more about the Eldar, check out Lutin 09's video, which I'm going to post in the description below, or check out Major Kill if you don't mind a bit of bad language. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, leave us a comment if you have something to add, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.